Hey everybody, welcome back to the Overwatch channel on YouTube. In today's video, scientists in complete denial about what reality is. So the only thing you can conclude if you look at all the data and evidence, folks, the only thing that you can conclude is that these, these people are in complete denial. No, and I, I'm not saying they're not smart. See, the thing is with being an idiot, is that uh, you can be a genius you can be absolutely a, 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 you know really great in many places of your life but in that one place if you've allowed bullshit to creep into your mind if you've allowed yourself to believe nonsense then you could be really great and also in that one place be a complete idiot and and that's what you have that's the only way to describe it let me start off with this this is going to be in the, the uh, links below. This is hilarious. This is absolutely hilarious. You need to check this out after you're done watching uh, my short video here. You got to see this clip. So this guy is interviewing basically a robot. Now, he actually says during this interview, uh, or as he's being interviewed by a reporter, that, you know, he would like, uh, he thinks that some days when machines will be conscious, okay, that they'll be able to do this, that, and the other thing. And um, these people are just completely clueless. They actually think that matter is the uh, fundamental thing and that consciousness comes out of matter. When all the data and evidence, if you honestly looked at it, doesn't say that. And the reason that I can say that for sure is because of something called vertical perception that happens, especially during certain NDE cases that the atheists have tried to debunk with absolute ridiculousness. Now, let me just, uh, let me just bring up one here. Let me, let me bring up something here. The Pam Reynolds case is a profound NDE case. Absolutely profound. Now, it's been written about in all kinds of places, that books, and it's been on YouTube. There's clips of interviews. I've linked to it in my earlier videos. If you just check out all the links I have in earlier videos, you'll see all this, all these data points. I'm trying to pull, put, point to people out, point out to people about this stuff. It's absolutely amazing. Now, in um, in one of the atheist websites, they actually try to uh, debunk. These top cases, like Maria Shu and Pam Reynolds, and if you read this stuff very carefully, they either have incorrect information, or they are just pulling information out of their ass, trying to make shit up so that they don't have to admit that consciousness survives bodily death. But all the evidence points to that. For example, the Pam Reynolds case. The Pam Reynolds case is very profound because not only was her heart and brain stopped for a uh, procedure to get to a brain aneurysm, she was her, her body was essentially in a frozen state. They had monitors monitoring her brain at all times. She had her ears plugged with 100 decibel clicking sounds going in there to try to provoke any kind of brain response so their machinery can make sure her brain was stopped. She had her eyes plugged shut. And somehow, these people can't accept the fact that she was able to not only perceive what was going on in the operating room, during that time, she was able to describe uh, a conversation that one of the nurses had with the doctor because they were having a problem getting something uh, into one of her arteries and the doctor told the nurse to use the other leg. It would be impossible for her to know this. And... Um, she was also under the impression they were going to use a saw to cut open her skull, and she uh, described the the uh, toolkit that they were using and the instrument that they were using, which looked nothing like a saw. It looked more like an electric toothbrush. All these things, and then she has, of course, the transcended experience where she moves on to the uh, other side temporarily before she's sent back to her body. But the parts that should at least intrigue scientists uh, all scientists are the parts where she's able to uh, witness things that she can't possibly have witnessed 
with her physical body. But um, this guy, this is hilarious. In the end of this interview, this robot gets asked a question, uh, you know, jokingly about, you wouldn't want to destroy the world or humanity or anything. And she actually says, okay, I will destroy humanity. It's hilarious. you got to check it out. Dark matter. Scientists will tell you that they know only 5% of the universe. I want you to really think about this. You know, think about what this means. They are admitting that they only know about 5% of what makes up the universe and the other 95% they call dark energy and dark matter. What is dark energy and dark matter? Nothing. Nothing. They, it's a hypothetical substance that they can't see, measure, uh, taste, smell. They can't put in a lab. It's never been found. It's just something they made up. It is literally a placeholder for what they don't know. They gave it a name, and everybody knows what matter is. So now you have dark matter, which gives it people a concept of something that they have no idea actually what it is. And I'll tell you why they have it all wrong, folks. Because they have they are looking at everything backward. This idiot here is looking at everything backward. He can't see that consciousness is the fundamental thing. Not all scientists are like this. I have to tell you, there is hope out there. I read a book a while ago called Biocentrism from Robert Lanza. This guy gets it. This guy's whole book is a premise that says, you know, we should be looking at it the other way around. Consciousness is fundamental. I highly recommend this book. Although, even in this book, I found something that I don't think he was getting. People are very human-centered, and uh, in my opinion, based on the information, data, and evidence that I'm looking at, anything that's alive has consciousness. And matter is simply rendered for consciousness, not the other way around. It's not matter that's making consciousness, the illusion of consciousness happen, which is what atheists want people to believe. It is literally consciousness that is causing matter to be rendered. And this guy gets that, but he's very human-centered in this book. For example, he shows an example of or he's pondering at one point in the book, if nobody's in the kitchen, if no, nobody's in there, does the kitchen even exist? And I would say if there's bacteria in your kitchen or in your sink or something, then at least that part exists because I think anything that's alive is conscious. So just a thought there. Now, uh, dark matter, dark energy. Uh, these people are, are never going to be able to find this stuff because it can't be found. It's just something they made up. And because they are looking at the universe backward, they can't never find it. They'll never find a solution to this until they're willing to admit that dark matter. But what's more likely going on with this stuff that's missing is probably, uh, think of it like a video game. In a video game, things are rendered when needed. And when they're not needed, they're not rendered. Couldn't it be that the stuff that's missing is simply not needed all the time so it's missing until it needed to do something and that's why it's not rendered into reality that we can perceive with, with our physical bodies and senses and all our materialistic equipment I'm sure it's something like that but I, I can't be sure so I, I just file it as under unknown there's nothing wrong with having a healthy ignorance of the unknown nothing wrong at all um, so I'll link to all this all this stuff here you can check it out for yourself um, and that's it folks uh, until next video take care talk to you later bye